demonstrate to how to make your realistic clay object today, making a hollow form or a solid form. So a hollow form would be anything that's thicker than your thumb you would need to make. Um, and if you were to make this just like this, it would blow up because it'd be way too thick. So you have to make it hollow. And then eventually you'll also need to put an air hole in that because you need to release the air. If you've ever put an egg in the microwave, don't go home and do this. But if you've ever done that, the steam has no place to go and it blows up. And this would wreck your piece and everybody else's. If your piece is smaller, like this chili pepper or this gourd, then you don't necessarily have to hollow it out. And I will show you both of those. And then I will also show you how to make um, a flat form 3D. So like a flower kind of thing. So I'm going to show those three things today. So on your table I printed modeling a clay pod. You just saw that in the video from this book, Hand-Built Pottery Techniques. So if you forget these steps, you can look through that, and that will help you a lot today, too. Okay, so on the video, you, would, um, you saw two pinch pots, so you would need to slip and score. But for this one, you just need some water and clay. You might also need some canvas if you're rolling out clay. And then I have these paddles over on the counter over there. Those are the things you might need today. And you'll also notice that in your tool tray, I put a dowel, a wood dowel. All right, so I also cut out some clay. I got a new cutting tool. And so they, um, I cut them up into some chunks that you guys can use. So that's a pretty good size for most of our stuff, but if you need to go smaller or bigger, you can wedge the clay together. So basically, just like with the tea bowl, I'm gonna show you the bell pepper to start. You would want to make a pinch pot. You need the object in front of you. So you have to make something that's in the class or you have to bring something in. So if you want to make strawberries, you need to bring in real strawberries or go to Hobby Lobby and buy a plastic one and have it in front of you. So you can look at it, turn it, feel it. So to make that, I would start off by um, making it into a ball and to soften it, if you toss it a few times, that will soften it. And then you make your ball, remember to do it in your hands, always in your hands and with cupped hands and you make your ball for your pinch pot. Most every form, the little pumpkin, this form, every form is done this way. And don't be afraid to try this. I know some of you have that weird thing where you're afraid of holes or whatever, but don't be afraid to try something like this as well. And I will do more demos on those things too. So you have your pinch pot, your ball to make your pinch pot. You put your thumb in, pinch turn. You should be really good at these because you had to make three hand-built tea bowls. Some of you scoop them out. You can do that too, but this is faster. So there is my hollow form. I'm going to close it up and trap air in it. So this is how you do it. You take your fingertips and your thumbs and you pinch turn in the air. Hold it up, okay? If you set it on your table, the edges get flat. Okay, you have to work pretty quickly too because otherwise your hands are warm and it dries the clay out. Now I'm going to um, pull the stem up a little bit. So you want a little bit of water. You don't have to have such a big bucket. There's cups over there. And you literally just take your fingers and thumbs and you pull. And if you need more water, you can pull it too to make, this doesn't have a stem, but you can start to make the stem. And you'll notice on the bell pepper that it has some ridges and so does the pumpkin. So I can use that if you have a little water on your fingers and thumbs, it's a little easier to make those ridges. Now this doesn't look exactly like a pepper, so the paddle works better than your hand. So take the paddle and this will flatten it and stretch it out for you. It will flatten and stretch that form out for you like that. Okay, then for the ridges in the pepper, you use the dowel or the side of the wood knife. This also works for the pumpkin or even the lotus pod, anything that has ridges or the lemon, and you would just take it on its side. Instead of drawing in it, you roll it. Do you know some bell peppers have four lines and some have three? Do you know why? Any guesses? Male and female. I can't remember which is which, if the three is the male or female. I have to Google it. All right, this is almost done. That's how fast these are. So I might do some indents, a little bit more stretching of it, make it a little more defined with a little bit of water on my fingertips. So these will be fast. So you're required to make one real and one abstract, but I would make more because you want to pick the best one. And then these would also be cute to put on your Thanksgiving table or give us gifts and some stuff like that. What's the problem with this if I put it in the kiln room? It's going to explode. It'll explode. 
Miss Martin and I will not fire this unless we can get a needle tool in it. So take a needle tool, find a good spot, don't do it in the side of the piece, like in the bottom. Make sure you're not just doing a dot, make sure it's going all the way to the air pocket and then wiggle it around because when the clay shrinks to bone dry, we still need to get a needle tool in. So if we can't get a needle tool in when it's bone dry to check all the way to the air pocket, <coughs> bless you, we will not fire this. Okay, and then you don't want to put your name all over it. So on the bottom, it's discreetly just put your initials and class shape. Now as you're building it or if it is um, kind of round and you're worried about the side, on the shelf over there behind Morgan is foam. So you can put it on foam to get leather hard and then put it in there. Or if you're still working on it, you would wrap it in a plastic bag, zip, zip locks, I have zip locks or another bag, and then put it on so that it doesn't get damaged on one side. So like let's say I was making the lemon, then I could do that and then it won't get damaged because some of them don't stand on their own like this one. Take a picture of it before you fire it because there will be hundreds of these and you want evidence that you made it. Now some of them have texture, so like the lemon, an easy way to put texture on the piece is to find something around the room that would work. This is actually a piece of broken kiln shelf. Um, from our, It's not from our kiln, but a piece of broken um, kiln brick, I should say, not shelf. Um, so that would work really good for the texture of the lemon. Also, if you don't like how it were, um, turned out, you can obviously squish it, recycle it, and start over. Okay, you don't have to keep it. You can recycle this and start with new clay. Okay, let's say you were making the pepper or the gourd that don't have to be hollowed out. Okay, what you would do is you would take a chunk of clay and make it into kind of a hot dog shape, and you get a bucket of water. I'm just warning you right now, this looks absolutely disgusting, but this is also how you make handles when we learn how to make mugs with handles instead of t-bowls. So it looks gross to some of you, you might giggle, but this is how you do it, okay? So you have your lump of clay and a bucket of water, you'll need to get a big bucket. The little cups don't work, and don't use the cleaning water, okay? And then you hold the top and you pull. You getting this? Okay, don't show this video to your parents. No, I'm just kidding. All right, this is how you do this, though. And if you Google how to pull a handle, this is how you do it. I'm not showing anything dirty. This is really how you do it. Okay, now, for the pepper, you can just twist it. Now, for the ridges of the pepper, I just pinched off the top of that. For the ridges, I use my thumb, and I just drag in for the ridges of the pepper. And then, of course, you're going to need to shape it more. So you might want to firm it up to leather hard a little bit on a piece of foam to let it firm up. And then for a stem, the easiest way to make a stem is just to pinch. But you could also slip and score a stem that you made on your piece. And you can kind of do it. And then you can make a ton of these this way. Same with the gourd. Okay, it looks disgusting, but that's actually how you make it because you need it to be wet so that it can stretch and be pulled. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is if you wanted to make a flower form, how to do that. So I'm going to show you the lily first and then um, something like the rose. So for this one, you would roll out a slab of clay, but it is way too thick. There are no petals this thick, okay? So get a piece of canvas, and there are two ways to flatten this thinner besides um, after you use the slab roller. So the first way to flatten clay is to toss it sideways, like this. And that will stretch it and thin it. But the other way, obviously, is to use a rolling pin. And I put these little pony rollers, they're called, on the counter, but there are bigger rolling pins there. And you would roll it thinner, okay? You don't want it so thick because you're making petals. Okay, so you can kind of guesstimate by looking at the flower to see the shape of it. So this shape is basically like a teardrop. So I would just take that and then I would roll it. Okay, and then you need the stamen inside of it. And it, the edges are still too sharp and too thick. So you would then pinch it and maybe add a little water to that form and then the stamen and some refining and definitely pinch the petal edges thinner that will make it look prettier for a stem on this or any other flower don't make a clay stem it'll break you have two choices I have I'm ordering some more of these glass rods but you can use this to measure so what you would do is you would put that in the flower 
and wiggle it because our clay shrinks 11%. And then after it's fired, we would hot glue that in there. Or you can use a wooden dowel, and that could be your stem, and we could paint that green or something like that. And you can make several of those because, like I said, this is really fast. If you're not making the lily, there's a poppy, and there's this. The easiest way, and I'm totally fine if you rip off a petal of these, is to put this on here and either roll it with the small end of the pony roller and then trace it. This one actually puts the texture in it, which is cool. Or just to cut out a bunch of those shapes, the red will just burn out in the kiln. And then you would have that basic form, like an oval, a void because it's a form, or a sphere. And then you would start to slip and score those petal forms onto that form and layer them and overlap them. And I do have on the counter over there three packets that show you how to make a rose for anybody that wants to do that. So um, that's it for making this thing.